MovieWeb.com. So I want to begin by asking both you guys, you know, so when Eddie and Adam put together the pitch, obviously a huge part of it is Jeff Bridges. Is mm -hmm. his, I mean, you know, you can't really make this movie, the movie you made, without Jeff Bridges' involvement. Right. Can you talk about the importance of getting Jeff involved and, and bringing him in, back into the, the Yeah, role? I mean, he's integral, you know, that character, Kevin Flynn, was integral to the first movie and an important part of, of our film. I mean, Jeff was really the first person we went to once, you know, once we started working on it. Um, we didn't have, didn't have, have the script then. Um, just had an idea of the kind of overall narrative arc we were interested in, and and Jeff was interested in you know the story, the story of his character, and um, I think he was really intrigued by the possibility of playing two characters in this film, and and the technology, and you know Jeff's always been interested in pushing the envelope, and uh, we we're you know real lucky to get him to sign on for even that that first test. They talked a lot about the you know a son's search for his missing father, and this idea of Jeff versus Jeff. Uh, those very early meetings, both which ideas were you know, very exciting to both Joe and to me. Well, a huge theme of the film seems to be family uh, and fathers and sons, and not just the relationship exactly. between Sam and Kevin, but the relationship between Kevin and Clue. And Clue is the son whose father doesn't love him anymore. Can you talk about those themes and the importance of that to the story? Well, that's that's what was really exciting to us was it it was a story that you couldn't really tell until now. I mean, that kind of that triangle, that relationship of a of a biological son and a digital son uh, was was really fascinating and, and exciting to us. Uh, and I also love the use of 3D in the movie. It's not just 3D for the sake of being 3D. It's really like the Wizard of Oz, where at the beginning it's 2D, the 3D is used like color is used in the Wizard of Oz. Was that sort of a, a parallel? Did you get, were you guys aware of that? Was that kind of the idea? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That was, I think, you know, that's using 3D in a dramatic way that supports the story you're trying to tell. Um, I think what's so. getting exciting is as filmmakers like Joe are realizing that, that 3D is really kind of a, a new tool in the toolbox. And from the very beginning, it was part of the creative conceit, not just a, well, should we put this in 3D after the fact? Not only did we do it in you know, the highest end way you can with the best cameras and the best rigs, uh, but also that Joe from the very beginning was thinking about how do I want to use the 3D as a storytelling tool. The film is titled Tron Legacy. Uh, and, and, and for you, I, I would ask uh, Sean, the legacy that Tron is to Disney, could you talk about what it means to Disney and the importance of why you wanted to, at this point, kind of utilize this aspect and, and, and make this film, make the sequel? Yeah, well, Tron, you know, in 82, uh, what, what Lisberger and team was so kind of cutting edge, both in terms of creative concept, but also in terms of execution. You know, John Lasseter, obviously uh, one of the most important people in Disney history, speaks uh, quite a bit about how much Tron inspired him to go, you know, pioneer in, in CG animation, which obviously led to Pixar and all so many of those wonderful titles. So at Disney, the, the kind of repercussive effects of the movie were huge. And for us to say, okay, 2010, an interesting time to both re-examine the creative question of the relationship of the human and the digital, but also to now take all this new technology and push it to the very limit, uh, we thought was an exciting, exciting time and challenge. 